Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today we are looking at Jeremiah 41 through 44. Now if you remember yesterday, we were looking at Jeremiah's suffering. So we saw Jeremiah in prison, we saw Jeremiah in a cistern, so a well, and then we saw Jeremiah questioned and eventually freed. Uh, so a lot there, and not a great time for him. Uh, beyond that, we also saw the fall of Jerusalem and then the plot of the assassination of Gedaliah. And that's exactly where we're picking up today. Uh, with Gedaliah's assassination, we'll see a flight. Uh, where were we? A flight to Egypt. Uh, we'll talk about some of the disaster and we'll talk about idolatry, which was the cause of the disaster. So we'll talk about that because I'm not convinced we take that as seriously as we should. So we'll talk about that briefly. Uh, but again, Jeremiah 41 through 44 today. So chapter 41. In the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, who was of royal blood and had been one of the king's officers, came with 10 men to get Eliah, son of Ahikam at Mizpah. While they were eating together there, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and the ten men who were with him, got up and struck down Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, killing the one whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. Ishmael also killed all the Jews who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah, as well as the Babylonian soldiers who were there. The day after Gedaliah's assassination, before anyone knew about it, eighty men who had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves from Shechem, came from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria, bringing grain offerings and incense with them to the house of the Lord. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. When he met them, he said, Come to Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. When they went into the city, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the men who were with him, slaughtered them and threw them into a cistern. But ten of them said to Ishmael, Don't kill us. We have wheat and barley, oil and honey hidden in a field. So he let them alone and did not kill them with the others. Now, the cistern where he threw all the bodies of the men he had killed along with Gedaliah was the one King Asa had made as part of his defense against Besha, king of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, filled it with the dead. Ishmael made captives of all the rest of the people who were in Mizpah. The king's daughters, along with all the others who were left there, over whom Nebuzardan, commander of the imperial guard, had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, took them captive and set out to cross over to the Ammonites. When Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the army officers who were with him heard about all the crimes that Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, had committed, they took all their men and went to fight Ishmael, son of Nethaniah. They caught up with him near the great pool in Gibeon. When all the people... Uh, when all the people Ishmael had with him saw Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the army officers who were with him, they were glad. All the people Ishmael had taken captive at Mizpah turned and went over to Jehohanan, son of Kareah. But Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and eight of his men escaped from Jehohanan and fled to the Ammonites. Then Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the army officers who were with him, led away all the survivors from Mizpah, whom he had recovered from Ishmael, son of Nephaniah, after he assassinated Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the soldiers, women, children, and the court officials he had brought, uh, he had brought from Gibeon. And they went on stopping at Geruth Kimham, near Bethlehem, on their way to Egypt, to escape from the Babylonians. They were afraid of them, because Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, killed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. Chapter 42 Then all the army officers, including Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and Jezaniah, son of Hoshiah, and all the people, from the least to the greatest, approached Jeremiah the prophet and said to him, Please, hear our petition, and pray to the Lord your God for this entire remnant. For as you now see, though we were once many, now only a few are left. Pray that the Lord your God tell us what to do and where we should go, that, uh, where we should go and what we should do. I have heard you, replied Jeremiah the prophet. I will certainly pray to the Lord your God as you have requested. I will tell you everything the Lord says and will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act in accordance with everything the Lord your God sends you to tell us. Whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we will obey the Lord our God, to whom we are sending you, so that it will go well with us, for we will obey the Lord our God. Ten days later, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. So he called together Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the army officers who were with him, and all the people from the least to the greatest. And he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition, says, If you stay in this land, I will build you up and not tear you down. 
I will plant you and not uproot you, for I am grieved over the disaster I have inflicted on you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares the Lord, for I am with you and will save you and deliver you from his hands. I will show you compassion so that he will have compassion on you and restore you to your land. However, if you say we will not stay in this land and so disobey the Lord your God, and if you say no, we will go live and we will go near and or we will go and live in Egypt, where we will not see war, or hear the trumpet, or be hungry for bread. Then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. If you are determined to go to Egypt, and you do go to settle there, then the sword you fill, or the sword you fear will overtake you there, and the famine you dread will follow you into Egypt, and there you will die. Indeed, all who are determined to go to Egypt to settle there will die by the sword, famine, and plague. Not one of them will survive or escape the disaster that I will bring on them. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. As my anger and wrath have been poured out on those who lived in Jerusalem, so will my wrath be poured out on you when you go to Egypt. You will be an object of cursing and horror, of condemnation and reproach. You will never see this place again. O remnant of Judah, the Lord has told you, do not go to Egypt. Be sure of this. I warn you today that you made a fatal mistake when you sent me to the Lord your God and said, pray to the Lord our God for us. Tell us everything he says and we will do it. I have told you today, but you still have not obeyed the Lord your God and all that he sent me to tell you. So now be sure of this. You will die by the sword, famine, and plague in this place where you want to go to settle. Chapter 43. When Jeremiah finished telling the people all the words of the Lord their God, everything that the Lord had sent him to tell them, Azariah, son of Hoshiah, and Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the arrogant men said to Jeremiah, You are lying. The Lord our God has not sent you to say you must not go into Egypt to settle there. But Baruch, son of Neriah, is inciting you against us to hand us over to the Babylonians so they may kill us or carry us into exile to Babylon. So Jehohanan, son of Kareah, and all the army officers and all the people disobeyed the Lord's command to stay in the land of Judah. Instead, Jehohanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers led away all the remnant of Judah had come back to live in the land of Judah from all the nations where they had been scattered. They also led away all the men, women, and children, and all the king's daughters whom Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, had left with Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, son of Neriah. So they entered Egypt in disobedience to the Lord and went as far as Taphanes. In Taphanes, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. While the Jews are watching, take some large stones with you and bury them in clay and brick pavement to the entrance of Pharaoh's palace in Taphanes. Then say to them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will send for my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and I will set his throne over these stones I have buried here. He will spread his royal canopy above them. He will come and attack Egypt bringing death to those destined for death, captivity to those destined for captivity, and the sword to those destined for the sword. He will set fire to the temples of the gods of Egypt. He will burn their temples and take their gods captive. As a shepherd wraps his garment around him, so will he wrap Egypt around himself and depart from there unscathed. There, in the temple of the sun in Egypt, he will demolish the sacred pillars and burn down the temples of the gods of Egypt. Chapter 44 this is the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews living in Lower Egypt, in Migdal, Taphanes, and Memphis, and in Upper Egypt. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You saw the great disaster I brought on Jerusalem and on all the towns of Judah. Today they lie deserted and in ruins because of the evil they have done. They provoked me to anger by burning incense and by worshiping other gods that neither they nor your, uh, they knew, nor your fathers ever knew. Again and again, I sent my servants, the prophets, who said, Do not do this detestable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or pay attention. They did not turn from their wickedness or stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore, my fierce anger was poured out and raged against the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem and made them the desolate ruins they are today. Now, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Why bring such great disaster on yourselves by cutting off Judah and the men and women and the children and infants, and so leave yourselves without a remnant? Why provoke me to anger with what your hands have made, burning incense to other gods in Egypt, where you have come to live? Will you will disobey yourselves and make yourselves an ob or excuse me, you will destroy yourselves and make yourselves an object of cursing and reproach among all the nations on earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness committed by your fathers and by the kings and queens of Judah? 
and the wickedness committed by you and your wives in this land of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. To this day they have not humbled themselves or shown reverence, nor have they followed my law and the decrees I set before you and your fathers. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I am determined to bring disaster on you and to destroy all Judah. I will take away the remnant of Judah, who were determined to go to Egypt and settle there. They will all perish from Egypt. They will fall by the sword or die from famine. From the least to the greatest, they will die by sword or famine. They will become an object of cursing and horror, of condemnation and reproach. I will punish those who live in Egypt with the sword, famine, and plague as I punish Jerusalem. None of the remnant of Judah who have gone to live in Egypt will escape or survive to return to the land of Judah, to which they long to return and live. None will return except a few fugitives. Then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with all the women who were present, a large assembly, and all the people living in Lower and Upper Egypt, said to Jeremiah, We will not listen to the message you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything that we said we would. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and pour out drink offerings to her just as we and our fathers and our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At that time we had plenty of food, and we were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing but have been perishing by the sword and famine. The women added, When we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes like her, like her image, and pouring out drink offerings to her? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, both men and women, who were answering him, Did not the Lord remember and think about the incense burned in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem by you and your fathers, your kings and your officials and the people of the land? When the Lord could no longer endure your wicked actions and detestable things you did, your land became an object of cursing and a desolate waste without inhabitants as it is today. Because you have burned incense and have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed or followed his law or his decrees or his stipulations, this disaster has come upon you as you now see. Now, Jeremiah said to all the people, including the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah and Egypt. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You and your wives have shown by your actions what you promised when you said we will certainly carry out the vows we made to burn incense and pour our drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. Go ahead then. Do what you promised. Keep all your vows. But hear the word of the Lord. All Jews living in Egypt, I swear by my great name, says the Lord, that no one from Judah living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name or swear as surely as the sovereign Lord lives, for I am watching over them for harm, not for good. The Jews in Egypt will perish by sword and famine until they are all destroyed. Those who escape the sword will return to the land of Judah. From Egypt will be very few. Then the whole remnant of Judah who came to live in Egypt will know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This will be assigned to you. But I will punish you in this place, declares the Lord, so that you will know that my threats of harm against you will surely stand. This is what the Lord says. I'm going to send Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, over to his enemies who seek his life, just as I handed Zedekiah, king of Judah, over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the enemy who is seeking his life. Man, that is so... Whew, that is a an incredible warning and then an incredible promise from God. And I wonder if we take that seriously enough. When when we see the people say, you know what? We didn't really experience disaster when we were baking cakes to the queen of heaven or offering drink offerings. You know, life really wasn't that bad. We had all the food we needed. Um, we didn't see war or anything else. Uh, and I think it's because of of the queen of heaven that, that we were serving her. And Jeremiah's reminder, no, no. God was giving you the opportunity. You didn't see it. You were leaning into your wickedness, wickedness. but with the prophets and with God's word, he, he provided that for you and you didn't relent in your wickedness. God wasn't rushing to punish you. He was giving the opportunity. And these people say, no, 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 we are, we are still gonna continue. We're gonna continue in our ways and we, it's not worth it to us to try something different. Our, our fathers, they served the queen of heaven. So, so we're going to do that as well. And that is, that's sad is what, is what that is. But I wonder if we, if we don't take that seriously enough. I mean, looking at, at the 10 commandments, you shall have no other gods before me is number one. And then number two, you shall have no idols. 
And I mean, that's exactly what these people are doing. They're worshiping other gods. They're setting up other idols. So right at the outset, they're just starting off God's command by ignoring and then being vigilant in that, not ignorance, but being vigilant in their disobedience. And I worry that on some level, we may not, we may not expressly say, oh, you know, I, I put this other God above God or, oh, this is an idol and set it up in my house as believers. But sometimes we act like that. I mean, I can at least speak for myself. Sometimes I act like I'm the God of my own decisions. And I have plenty of idols that I've set up in my head. And I think that's something that we need to be praying about and we need to be mindful of. So let's do exactly that. My God, we thank you for your patience. Your word is, is law, God, but we can also be assured that, that your word will take place and that you are not rushing for judgment, Lord, but you give proper warning. And we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, help us to take your word seriously. Help us to take you seriously, to not put anything else above you and to recognize that not even ourselves are to be above you, God, especially not ourselves. Lord, help us to align our lives properly with you, that we may honor and glorify you in everything we do. Once again, Lord, we thank you so much for your patience and your love and your grace. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that is about all I have for you today. As always, know that I appreciate you, wife, appreciate you tons, and I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.